How are you? I'm good. How are you? Well, thank you for doing this. I think it's a great idea what you're doing. Thank you. There's probably a lot of questions going on. Thank you. Yeah. So I have a global question for you. So you've been in the business, you've been in the business a long time. I know it was a long time ago, but it wasn't, it feels like not so long ago where those of us who represent actors and those of you who cast actors, we actually got to meet each other, right? Before all of this. And now we don't meet each other anymore. No. And like you and I had been in, in contact with each other and we only met because a client of mine, Pamela Roy Lance, the lovely Pamela Roy Lance was yes. in a movie that had a premiere that she was invited to that I went with her to and we got to meet each other. And I was like, wow, I really wish that we could do that more often. So I'm wondering if you guys, you who do what you do, like, do you miss meeting us? Oh yeah, I, I, I miss uh, just human contact. Uh, that's part of the business. I mean, the, the, I've been doing this now for 21 years and so much of it is about relationships and uh and trust and um you know you can have years of experience doing this but if you don't have uh, the relationships built with agents and managers uh you're not going to be very useful uh i know people that i you know reach out to in a pinch uh that i trust that have great taste and uh, I know if I have an emergency, I can call them and say, who do you have that fits this? And uh, they'll, you know, come through for me. So, and the longer I do this, the more I realize how invaluable that is. And I think a lot of people that <clears throat> start out in this business uh, don't appreciate how, how important that is. Um, so yeah, I do miss having a lunch with somebody in person or, you know, uh, just setting up a, a meeting or whatever, or meeting somebody at a premiere like I did with you. I think we're going to be trans, transferring this into these types of things, Zoom meetings. I know a lot of people have been doing Zoom meetings uh, in the last couple of months. In March, somebody mentioned Zoom to me, and I thought it was an aerobics class. I, I said, I don't know what that is. Or a they, TV show for kids, kids right? <laughs> the TV show from the 70s. So... Uh, but I've used it so many times over the last couple months. I've been teaching classes on Zoom. Um, a lot of acting teachers in town have um, uh, adapted to doing a Zoom format uh, or something similar to Zoom. And um, I'm finding that uh, I'm enjoying it. Um, I did a couple of classes just this week with some acting schools around town and watch their scenes. And I find the actors are more relaxed because they're in their homes. They're not rushing across town to, um, you know, to get to the, the class and try to beat traffic. Mm -hmm. And the same with me, I can, I'm sitting in the comfort of my, my home watching this. And, um, and it, it's also interesting because the, the students are all over the country now. So we had a, we had a kid the other night that's in Florida and he was doing the class. And um, so I think it's opening up some doors that weren't even thought about before, that you know, teachers are now going, okay, wait a minute, I can be more national. Um, part of that is because everything is, I think, going to go virtual, uh, at least <clears throat> for the foreseeable future. I don't see any in-person auditions. It's interesting, I had a, uh, a client, it was a commercial shoot, um, auditioned on Zoom, called back on Zoom, and, and booked it, and they shot it in his home. Mm -hmm. They drop off the equipment, you know, so I was talking about how actors need to be hyphenates, right? They can't be good at just one thing anymore. They've got to be yeah. good at other things. Well, this is certainly pushing the buttons for that in, in, in production, and he had a blast and he got paid a thousand dollars for the use of his home on top of what he was getting paid for being in it so that was a huge benefit oh yeah look it was self-taping had started to get more frequent in the just over the last couple of years um but this accelerated everything uh and <clears throat> i've done a couple projects during the the pandemic 
Yeah, I wanted to talk to you about that because I see that you're you're busy. You're doing stuff. You're doing union stuff and non-union stuff. So I mean, there's a lot of layers for us to for talk about. To, yeah. Talk about with that. When the pandemic started, obviously there was very little of anything. Everything had pretty much been quiet. I started hearing uh, from people uh, in I'd say May, uh, and initially it started out as commercials. I had a couple commercials that people wanted me to do both union and non-union and um uh i had actor self-tape and it was a learning experience for me <clears throat> as well because um i hadn't made it an assumption that actors knew how to properly create an aesthetic uh, for the technology like you assumed that they knew the technology yeah yeah, yeah. And I was getting a lot of self tapes in initially that either were framed improperly, you couldn't hear them, you couldn't see them. Um, the, the reader wasn't effective. Uh, there were distractions, there was too much movement. So I, based on what I had seen, <clears throat> I created a checklist of things that I now send out now with self tapes since they're bullet points. Can uh, you share some of those? Like what it Sure, yeah. sure. Uh, right from the start with the slate. Uh, because I'm not seeing you in person, I want, you know, name, height, role, and also tell me a little bit about yourself in, you know, 30 seconds or less, some, some characteristic that makes you unique, something along those lines, you know, so that I get a better sense of the, the actual actor. Um, then in terms of the, the shooting of it, make sure you have proper lighting. So there's ring lights you can buy on Amazon. There's also lighting kits. <clears throat> None of this stuff is exceptionally expensive. Mm -hmm. It's very affordable. Um, you don't really need a camera. You can use your phone. The phone works just fine and has good quality. Um, you might need to get a microphone to make sure that you can be heard properly. The framing should be kind of mid chest up and a little more than shoulder length. Yeah. Um, you should position your reader if they're in the room with you next to the camera so that it looks like you're talking to the camera and you're not talking off into the, you know, off to the side. Mm -hmm. We want to see this. Yeah. Yeah. And if you don't have a reader in the room, people are doing it through FaceTime, through Zoom, through other methods like this. Uh, been uh, suggesting to some clients who've been in that situation who don't have anybody around, I say, you know what, just get your iPhone and, and email the sides to somebody else and put the iPhone sort of where you think you need that person to be in the, in the, in the picture, like off to the side and then just use it that way. I think yeah. that that's been helpful too. That works just fine. Minimize uh, action. Uh, if you're going to sit or stand, make a choice and don't do both. Don't keep getting up and down. Yeah. Um, I think for purposes of self-taping, you really need to uh, refine the scene so that, uh, you know, say it's a, a horror movie script and the person's running around and things are chasing them. I think you need to look at it from the perspective of what's gonna be most effective for the audition. Mm -hmm. This is, the audition is not the film, it's not the TV show, but how am I going to present the performance that's going to get me the job? And can I ask you, if, yeah. if the technical quality, like when you are, you're playing the self tapes back. It, 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 and you, if you're, and I assume bad quality is a distracting quality that you don't want in these tapes, is that enough to get you to go next? Or you know, do you have the patience, Paul, <laughs> to sit well, and kind of talk? I do, I do, but I can't say that for every producer. Uh, you mm. know, and uh, you're trying to sell yourself and you're trying to present your you know, your best performance. And that includes all of the, uh, the aesthetic part of it. Um, so I do try to look through everybody and I know our limitations right now. I mean, people are trapped in their homes. Sometimes they're not in their, their normal place of living. There's some, mm -hmm. some people are staying with their parents, so they don't have a lot of options. Um, but you got to make the best of it and try to make it look as presentable. I mean, I've seen, I've had self tapes with people standing in a, a weeds in a backyard uh in a bathroom in a kitchen with dirty dishes um those are not a good idea you don't no. really want to do that no. no those are extreme examples but you'd be surprised how many bad ones bad quality ones come in 
another thing is the backdrop. Now, I wouldn't recommend what I have here is, yeah. to me, is a little distracting. I would, if I stood against that wall, that's fine. If it's a neutral backdrop, yeah. that's not going to distract my attention from you. Uh, and um, as far as the sides are concerned, I want you to be off book. That doesn't mean you can't hold the sides in your hand off camera and use it as a security blanket to prompt yourself. Um, but you do like an you do like actors to be off book. <laughs> it's, it's, in a way, it's yeah. different than a reading to show up in your office and you're actually re yeah. Because you you have uh, you could do fifty takes if you if you want to. So I want you to send me your best material. Um, and actors have asked me this question recently. If I have two that I like and I can't decide, send me both. I'll take a look at it. It shows me that you're, you're making different choices with it. And when I ask you a question about that, um, because I've often talked about how my fear is that, and we haven't even gone to the whole virtual audition piece mm -hmm. of it yet, but in self-tape, my fear is that a lot of actors can easily become sloppy at the process. Exactly what you said. Well, they said, well, it's my equipment, it's my time. I can do 100 takes if I want. And I said, well, yes, you can. But when you go into a room for an audition or you go for a callback, you're kind of expected to be audition ready on the first take. And there's no situation you're ever going to find yourself in where you will be allowed to do that right. many, if you're allowed to do one more at all. So I like, I'm, I, I, I say to them, even though you can do that many, you should be disciplined or work at being disciplined enough to try and get it right the first or, or second time. Does that make sense? Oh, absolutely. Because as you said, you're not going to get on a set today and, and have 20 takes. Uh, I do a lot of movies for Lifetime and Hallmark and uh, a lot of indie films. And I can say that the, the Lifetime movies, they shoot them in 12 days. Some, some shoot in less than that. I've done ones that have shot in 10 days mm. and uh, there's one or two takes and that's it. And then you're moving on to the next thing. They're very efficient and uh, they expect the actor to come prepared. So uh, that is what you said is a very important point. Um, it's also important to get the self tape in, in an appropriate amount of time. Uh, yeah, I, you find you like, they, like why would you Oh, and I must say, I've like heard something on the news that was some story about it, that there's now a prolifer. I know this was happening a little bit, but there's a proliferation of actors who are just been blowing off auditions altogether. I got like, why? Why would you do that? Don't you realize how chosen you are when you're asked to be one of the few people who get to do it? And you know, then they just, I, I you know, I, I don't get that. Well, I requested an, an audition a few months ago from an actress and uh, she wrote me and she said, um, what do you people expect me to be the cinematographer and the director and the producer? And I don't, and I don't, uh, and I said, never mind. And what I, what I did say to her actually was, I said, look, you have to learn to adapt. This is the new reality. And if you don't adapt, then find another job. Because right, right, because it's not, right. I'm finding I have, because I represent some older actors, I have some clients who have been with me since the early 1980s. That's, wow. I try to celebrate that, but it's annoying mostly, but loving, <laughs> lovingly annoying. <laughs> but the, the technology, it's been a learning curve, right, for them in that. But, but I was going to say in this whole virtual world, for, for me, it's very much like the days when we had live television, right? Because actors don't really understand that when you're in a virtual situation, you are always on. And in a, if you're in a virtual callback, right? And there's lots of squares with lots of people watching you. Mm -hmm. You got to really recognize it's not just how you look, but it's how you're behaving when you're in that little box that could really impact the result of the audition. Oh yeah. Well, it's also, it's the same as when you go in for a live audition. I tell actors all the time, we're hiring you based on your performance, but based on who you are as a person as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I rarely get a call from set about an actor's performance. It's usually about their behavioral behavior. Uh, yeah. And um, it, 
you know, I'll get a call saying they they weren't nice to the hair and makeup people, or they were disrespectful to this person or that person. Mm -hmm. And those are the things that I write down and I, it makes you less likely to hire that person again. And so by the way, if that happens, I'm just sort of curious, like what do you, what do you do with that? Do you call the agent or manager and have a conversation? Yeah. Oh yeah, I will have a conversation with them and let them know what's going on and have them have a conversation with their client and uh, say, you know, tell them this is not a good reflection on you or your client. And it's going to make them less likely to want to work with these people again. So well, and it also puts our credibility right. So if when I make submissions, if I'm making a submission of an actor who you don't know, yeah. So I feel like I'm putting my reputation on the line with every time I hit submit, right? And yep. so I, I, that's it takes a long time to to develop whatever skills we have, right? And so you would never want to risk that for the sake of any one client. So I, I, that's hard for me to connect those dots. As it is for me, uh, it, it's surprising when it happens because I feel as if, if you're one of the lucky ones to get on a film or a, a major theater production or, um, or a television series, it's, it's a privilege, it's not an entitlement. I mean, how many people in, on the planet get to do that. So you should be happy to be there. There was a veteran actor that I just, I, I'm stealing a quote from him. Um, he's been doing this for decades and they said, what's your secret of success? And mm -hmm. he said, well, one thing I can tell you is that I learned from being on many, many sets that uh, it costs nothing to be nice. And I think that goes a long way. And there's, there's directors that will hire actors over and over and over again because they're nice and they're good people and they're enthusiastic and you know they're going to give you a hundred percent when you're there so um grateful they're Appreciate grateful yeah. That's, yeah yeah exactly um, and especially <clears throat> right now um we have so many challenges ahead of us uh and it's kind of a new frontier and i know i've had many conversations with a multitude of producers and they all keep saying the same thing we have to make sure we we really are careful and we vet the actors we hire or we um we hire people you know we've worked with before that we have a comfort level with because there's going to be a lot of obstacles we can't have divas on the set uh, well, I, I think that that's going to be true for those of us who represent actors right we're going to start vetting we're going to start letting go and then we're going to start yeah. vetting who, whatever the new talent that we're considering is going to be. It's very interesting. I've, I've heard from a lot of actors in the last couple of months, their agencies have closed or their management companies have closed you know, and they're, they're panicked and they're, you know, what do I do? And you know, I say, oh, don't do anything because this is not the time to seek representation because we don't know what the needs of the new normal are going to be yet. So, you know, we all have to take a, a step back um, for that and, and 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 I guess to that end, you said something a few minutes ago that I, I wanted to revisit, um, and then I want to talk about sort of what your process is at, currently and moving forward. Um, I talked with Amanda Richards for one of our interviews for the web series, and she's uh, head of talent and casting at Sony Television, and we were talking about sort of the shift in the landscape. And this whole thing about now self tape virtual auditions, and you said you don't have to be in LA. And, and this is so true that for the first time, there doesn't need to be a rush to be in LA or go to New York. You have access now in a way that we just couldn't deliver access before. And it's so leveling the playing field for actors everywhere. And that, that, that's exciting for me. I agree. I agree. I think you can just, you could be just about anywhere now, as long as you can, if the filming is taking place here, you have to manage to get, get here. But uh, you could, I, I had a couple actors ask me that were over the last couple of months that have been staying with family in Texas and Florida and Ohio, um, should I come back? And I said, if you're, with, if you're with your loved ones and you're, everything's good there, I don't see a reason to rush back here. Um, you can do your self tapes or virtual auditions from there. And if you get the job, you can come here. Um, until things settle down here a little bit. Yeah. Um, I think there'll be positives that come out of this, uh, you know, God willing, that, um, you know, I think some of it is going to be uh, what we just said, where you're, 
the the playing field is going to be more um, level, and there'll be more opportunities for people um, and for for uh, casting. For you guys, yeah, you have a more a, yeah. a more of a variety of people yeah. to choose from. Um, and I, I've taken advantage of the time that I've had uh, to, you know, with these projects that I started doing. I, as I said, I started doing some commercials, and then I completed filming a um, an independent film that they did non-union, mm -hmm. and um, and it, you know, it was all pros. People have been doing this for years, um, and we really got a great cast across the board, but I was very thorough. I, I set up a lot of people and then the advantage of doing self tapes is as opposed to in person is I can bring in, you know, exponentially more people. Uh, I love, I love that. And I think actors need to understand that this is, that is, if that's all that were to happen, I mean, that's a huge, huge opportunity for so many more actors i love that you're doing that yeah and my my philosophy was was that even if i don't they're not right for this i'm going to put them in a file of people that i can use down the road that i like and it's i've seen so many new exciting faces and that i otherwise wouldn't have met before uh because in a you know on a daily uh on a normal day you know normal being up to early March, I was casting a movie right up until we got shut down. And we had a day where I had 46 people in that day. And that was a long day mm. and a busy day. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> now you can set up several hundred people on a self tape and then watch them as they come in yeah. <clears throat> and file them. So. I'm seeing a lot more people and I'm it, that excited me. The frustration for, I think, those of us who represent actors is that we so want them to be able to meet you and have an opportunity to kind of be in the same space. And my goal is not for them to book the role, although that would be really nice. My goal is really for them to book the room and particularly if they do not know you or mm -hmm. one of your colleagues, right? Because a career is not based on a single job. Right? A career is based on a lot of stuff and more globally. And so their ability to connect with you and to, and to be prepared and to do a great job when they're with you, exactly what you said. You may, they may not be the right actor, right? It's not the best actor that gets the job. It's the right actor. And so they may not be the right actor for that particular role, but certainly they're buying um, some, some, some great future relationships that will open doors for them down the road, and I, I, I fear that they can't book the room that, that easily or in the same way with self tape. No, but um, I think with the advent of these virtual auditions that we're going to be starting. I mean, you know, you probably know Gary Marsh is going to be doing. They're, they just set up EcoCast Live. Yeah, I was in on one of those webinars the other day, and Gary also. We did an interview. We had a conversation for this series as well, and it's. Well, I love that. I mean, that's really cutting edge. Yeah, yeah. And there's, there's people, I know people have been doing projects using Zoom and, yeah. and you know, comparable services. Mm -hmm. And um, I think with the EcoCast Live, I was impressed by the, uh, the what they have set up already, mm -hmm. where, you know, um, it's a virtual check-in and they, you, they can tell us if, um, uh, mm -hmm. if they're ready to come in the room and, I think once they implement the whole chat thing where I can contact the actor while they're waiting and say, look, we're behind and all that, and where we can collaborate with other people. Mm -hmm. I can have a producer somewhere and a director. And um, that's free for you. Like you guys don't have to pay to right, use that. Like right. we don't have to either. So that's, and it's free to the actor. So I, you know, it's a win, win, win all around. <clears throat> yeah. And I think um, this sort of touches on, I mentioned this a little, a few minutes ago. Um, there's actors that I, I have, friends that are actors that are brilliant, that are terrible in auditions. They get very nervous. Yeah. And I think this could help eliminate some of the nervousness because you are at home. And you, there, I think there's something to that where you're in the comfort of your home. And I've noticed it with, with these acting classes I'm doing. I'm getting actors that are just much more connected and relaxed. 
and more confident and, uh, mm. and taking out of the equation, and this is a big thing, trying to race across town to a million different appointments and changing your, your clothes and, and getting your sides ready and forgetting your sides and- I'm Looking for a place to park. park. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah, and getting in there and you know, uh, sitting amongst other actors and mm. freaking out because there's 20 other people reading for the same part. Right. You're not gonna have that. Uh, and I think you could potentially schedule a lot more auditions in a day uh, that way. I know a producer said to me, uh, he had four meetings in one morning a couple weeks ago. And he said, this would have taken the whole week. And I got them all done in one morning doing a Zoom meeting. Yeah. So um, I think this is sort of a discovery that you know we're realizing, oh God, this, is, this could actually be yeah. beneficial to everybody. Yeah, so, uh, so we didn't ask for it necessarily. And you know, it's funny, I, I'm, I, I vacillate between, I'm, I'm so excited about the opportunities that this is presenting for us. You know, and I, at the same time, I recognize what a struggle this whole time has been for so many people. And I'm trying to find, I want to be empathetic and supportive in, in every way I possibly can. But I also don't want to temper my enthusiasm for the great wins that will happen on the other side of this, because I think it's, they're going to be many, as you say. Well, I also think in preparation for things opening up more, actors they should be in class now. Uh, virtually every acting teacher I know is, has gone virtual. And they, they're they enjoying the, the process. Uh, and But what it's doing is honing your skills to do virtual auditions. You're learning what works and what doesn't in this space. And I think the more practice you have, once work starts up again, you're going to be aces with this. Whereas other people that you said are, are just not auditioning or not, you know. Um, well, they're not comfortable with the, like right. the technology, right? So even though they're resume credentialed, you know, experienced actors doesn't mean you know, you've got to stay relevant. And, but now that has a different meaning entirely too. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And look, nobody knows what the future holds. We're all sort of in this state of uncertainty and hoping that, uh, at least for here, I, I'm, we're all hoping that things level out the, the rest of this month and we can get this under control because productions are starting up. And I think, there, you know, I've had actors pass on projects because of a legitimate fear of, of COVID. And I, I totally understand that. Yeah. at this yeah. point and uh you know so we're we're cognizant of that and i'm not holding it against anybody um and <clears throat> i can tell you the productions are um whether they're union or non-union are really following very strict covid rules um they want to make sure that there's their crews are safe and the cast is safe yeah. and that uh, everybody's happy on the set. So um, there, everybody I've worked with has been taking this very, very seriously. Yeah, and, and, and you're very busy. I, I, I see from what little is in the <laughs> breakdowns, I yeah. see your name a lot. So how have you managed, you're always busy, but how have you managed to stay busy during, during this? Well, initially, uh, the first couple months, it, it like everybody else, it wasn't. And uh, gradually, I was getting approached by teachers saying, would you sit in and watch our classes or, uh, you know, watch our showcase? And I, and I said, that was a godsend for me because it was great creatively. And it was also great um, just psychologically, just to connect with people. And I kept telling the actors that. I said, isn't this nice that we're all able to just see each other like this? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, even though we're not person to person. And so I, I, that started and there were projects though that I was signed on to do when this all happened. And they just had to put, hit the pause button. And a lot, <clears throat> a lot of those are now starting up again. And, um, so, and I have a couple for later in the fall. I have one that they want to shoot in Europe. 
uh, and I got the breakdown out on that. I have a couple out right now that um, I'm actively working on and I have one that's shooting right now. And aside from the commercials, the first thing out of the box was the children's series. Uh, and I'd worked on that last year. And the nice part of that was it's largely shot outside. Huh. So they were shooting in Simi Valley in a park. And <clears throat> so there's a lot of social distancing and you're in, you're in the fresh yeah. air, you're not in an enclosed space. And it's safe. And it's safe. Yeah. And they, they've shot about six episodes so far and there hasn't been any issues at all. And they've minimized the crew and the changes ahead are one of the things that um, is happening right now was a lot of the scripts that were ready to go before this happened. They had to go back and take another look at them and go, okay, we got to cut the 18 cast members down to 10. We've got to yeah. eliminate a lot of the extras. We got to limit the, the locations. We got to create scenes where we can have social distancing. Props. Um, we got to make sure that there's not a lot of props in the scene. Mm -hmm. um, you know, virtual scripts. So they're going to, the script will be on your phone, no paper on, on set. The craft services is going to be boxed lunches, boxed dinners. It's going to be a pre prepared stuff. It's That's the worst. I like draw the line. I mean, come on. I mean, it's like coach on Southwest, right? Well, it all, it's all coach on Southwest. How broken. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but for the time being, it's the safest way to do it. And um, so there's, they're, they're adapting in that respect. And uh, now I wasn't involved in this project, but I know as early as June, there were projects that were shooting out of state that shot in Oklahoma. And there were several that shot there. Canada's really good right now. They're, they're in really good shape. And um, there's some areas of Canada where they have under 20 cases. Mm. So, um, but are they doing quarantine? Like I, I, I read in England, if you're if you're traveling to, to yeah. Great Britain, then you don't have to quarantine if you can prove you're an actor or you're in a production. <laughs> yeah, company. but I know, like for these Canadian things, yeah. if you're coming from here, they want you to quarantine for two weeks when you get there before, and then you have to be tested and. Right. And uh, actors are being paid for their time in quarantine, which is yeah. sort of benefited. I mean, yeah. I'm sorry, you have to have that benefit, but at least they're paid for it. Right. Right. So, uh, so I, I, actors need to know that this is being taken very seriously and they want to be as careful as possible. And they're, that's why I think it's, they're going very slowly with this and seeing what works and what doesn't. And there's just been sort of a trickling of things. And everybody's waiting, I think, this month to see how the productions that have been shooting are going. I think the, one of the first things out of the gate was the soap opera, The Bold and the Beautiful. And they've been shooting uh, for the last few weeks and yeah. they actually started airing new episodes yeah. uh, this week. So that's encouraging that they've been able to get that out. And, and they're both bold and beautiful to be able to, I mean, literally and figuratively, right? Yeah. <laughs> and and one, of the, one of the things that I, I want to, you know, remind actors is that we're in a, we're in an industry that there's always going to be a need for entertainment. And there are a million different platforms now, streaming platforms and the networks and the studios and that need content. So they're, they're not going to just stop making product. So they're, as soon as it's safe, you're going to see more and more stuff happening. I think the, the miss, and I think a lot of people were guilty of this. I think people thought by now, things would be up and running and going like gangbusters. Back in March, people were thinking that and not realizing just how per pervasive this thing was. And uh, just, so I think this sort of threw people, but I remember talking to a producer who I have a great deal of respect for, and this is back right when it started. And I said, when do you think we're gonna see stuff going back? And she, she said to me, after Labor Day, and at the time I went, Oh my God! And but here we are. Yeah, We're it seems off forever here. off. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I think pretty much um, the year is pretty much a write-off where that stuff is concerned, right? I mean, we're always saying, or we, I hear, well, you know, as soon as we get a vaccine, well, that'll make a huge difference. But but a, but we we in general, and we specifically perhaps, have to be 
comfortable going back like into a movie theater. We have to be comfortable and, 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 and feel like, all right, yeah. it's safe and I, I, I can do this again. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, and I think uh, a lot of it has to do with the vaccine. A lot of it has to do is if it, they could at least provide us with some sort of therapeutic drugs that can mitigate the severity of this where people go, okay, I'm not gonna end up in the hospital or, or dead because of this um and so and again it's a legitimate fear uh i know an, uh, more people than i care to admit that have either had this or um uh, i know two people who passed away from it oh wow. uh, one right. who was in mm. his 30s another one who was in his early 70s mm. so it that's that's one of those reminders like okay this is hitting everybody um you know, and you could be one of the lucky few that just gets, that's asymptomatic or has minor symptoms, but you can have, yeah. you be like one of my neighbors who's had it for three months and still has mm. symptoms. Wow. So, um, so it's nothing to mess around with. We have to be smart and grateful, right? I yeah. Mean, sort of a combination yeah. of stuff. Um, I, I really appreciate this. I want to ask you just sort of one more little bit of information. Sure. Um, and, and this is terrific. And you get a gold star at least for doing this. <laughs> you're a, I owe you. You're a, you're, a, you're a good guy for doing this. Um, you are doing lots of union and non-union, more non-union lately. I'm wondering, you know, if, if is there a convergence somewhere happening between what non-union work used to be and what union used to be I mean, used to like the never they will always be parallel you know they would never intersect or cross but it seems like it's getting harder and harder to tell the difference in a lot of ways yeah i look we were very very pleased with the cast we just put together uh it across the board uh and uh, this the person I was working with had never done a non-union film before. He had never directed one, and he just said, "Wow, that I didn't expect that we'd get this amount of talent." But again, it took it for me. I can't speak for my colleagues, but when I'm doing a non-union project, uh, it's it's much more extensive in terms of I have to look at a lot more actors and. Um, uh, they, I have to properly vet them because we've got to make sure that they can get on that set and and get deliver. The camera ready, really. Or, exactly, because you can. Uh, you pointed this out before. If you have, you can do twenty takes and send me a brilliant audition. But if you get on set and you choke up or you, you know, you don't know where your mark is, that's a problem. So I, I, I'm looking at their training. I'm looking at. Um, you know, who they study with, if they're currently with somebody, if they've worked on projects before. And, um, you know, so uh, there was probably at least double the number of actors I normally would have looked at for something. But we got it done fairly quickly. Look, I don't know what, you know, what the percentage is going to be for non-union or union in the next few months. I know that for right now, it seems like there's there's more non-union. You could probably speak to that. Um, tons, tons. Yeah, I. Yeah. <clears throat> that's all we're seeing, and so um, it's it is a it it it's on the verge of creating a real dilemma. You know, at what well, point I, do you? Honestly, I think it, you know we're it's called show business, uh, and I think a lot of actors forget that the business side of it, and right. um, but I think a lot of it has to do with uh, with money. And in terms of these new, all these things I was saying about the, the COVID rules are costing tens of thousands of dollars on each production. So it's, it's adding to the budget. So I think that's one of the, the reasons some productions, I, and again, I don't want to speak for anybody, but I'm just saying, I think that's one reason why they might be going, okay, let's try it this way because we're going to be spending you know, X amount of dollars on all these new precautions. Yeah. So, um, and I don't want to say that I feel sorry for the big studios because it depends who I'm negotiating with. You know, I don't usually, but you know, there is a fallout for movie theaters being closed and the bot not having a box office. Right. So at some point there's, there's a trickle down. So, and you said this earlier, there's, We've been all been at home more than ever. We've been just lapping up content from 
broadcast television and anywhere we can get it. So there's a huge need for new content. And my fear is that, you know, we've gotten pretty used to the ultra low budget, 125 buck a day world, but I think that we're going to see a proliferation of the proliferation in that because the budgets won't meet what the needs are for the content. Right. At least, at least initially, uh, you know, and, and I think this is a positive for actors out there that don't, that aren't necessarily names, quote unquote, yeah. at this point. I think the, so much of it is restricted by foreign sales and buyers and we got to get a name for this and that. I think they're going to be a lot more flexible now because of the need for content and it will open the door for actors that might not have gotten the job before which is great it'll it will discover new new talent so those restrictions might become a little less harsh and looking for the non-union producer it's sort of interesting to me because you do work for non-union productions and union productions but if it's a non-union production they're getting this incredible you with the reputation you have, you've been doing this for a long time, so they may call it non-union, but you do the work you do, regardless of how that that production is categorized. Yeah, well, I can tell you, like on a normal year, uh, I may have done one non-union job the whole year, uh, and that's the whole year, and I've had years where I've done none, and yeah. that includes commercials, uh, and this year alone, I think three so far, wow. so. Yeah. You know, uh, so I don't, I'm not quite sure where it's going, but you know, you've been in the business a, a since while. Lincoln was president. Well, but no, but when the commercial, when the commercial strike happened back 20 years ago, yeah, everything went non union. So I think we're in kind of a, a transitional mode, and we'll see. I think we'll have a better idea of where we're at this yeah. time next year. And I think during the commercial strike, we saw a lot of commercials with animals, right? Yes, we did. <laughs> yeah. They created Geico animals. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's a will. <laughs> Paul, I really, I really appreciate this. I mean, there's, there's so much to unpack. And I, and I hope the actors watching this will just sit and, and, and think about it. And, and I think... I, I, the message that I'm getting from you is, is optimistic and I, and I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, don't, uh, don't get down. This is a tough, everybody's life has been turned upside down, but I do believe there's a light at the end of the tunnel and uh, it's uh, you know, I'm seeing all the signs that everybody's sort of gearing up to get going and I, th those that haven't already started. So um, but I think just people have to be patient. And I think if we get through this year, um, <laughs> we'll see a big difference next year. I think it'll, things will start. And, and again, it's, it's about adapting and it's about seeing how, what works and what doesn't. And we're all sort of experimenting now, but at the end of the day, I think there's going to be, um, you know, a lot of opportunities. So. And, and they have to take care of themselves as do you They have to stay safe as do you. I want you to go put your mask back on as soon as we say goodbye because you have to be safe and you can't be too careful. I thank you for this. This is I've learned a lot talking to you and I, I think this is really, really wonderful. So thank you for that. No, it's, it's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. So, um, you know, anytime. Thank you, sir. And I'll, I'll see you on Breakdown Express sometime soon. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you Love very it. much. Thank you so much. Stay safe. Stay well, and uh, I will. We will be speaking. Okay. All right. Thank take care. You. Take care. Bye bye.